Depression, a common thing that we all deal with. We all know someone who deals with it. How to deal with depression today at Live On Purpose TV. Today we're gonna to talk about depression. I know, right? Depression. Uh, actually, you know what? Um, depression is a common human experience. It's probably one of the most misunderstood of, of a lot of our experiences. It feels like if I'm depressed, something's wrong with me. I don't think it means that. A long time ago, I, I came to the conclusion that depression is really kind of like the fever of mental illness or from a mental health standpoint, it's an indicator that something's wrong. Like if you have a fever, right? It, it, that's not the problem. That's an indicator that there's a problem, that there's an infection or that there's an injury of some kind. Depression is very similar. It means something is out of whack, something's off kilter somewhere, and, and there are two elements to that. There's, there's a brain element and there's a mind element. Now your brain and your mind aren't the same thing. Um, your brain isn't your mind anymore than your little finger is your mind. It's part of your body. It's an organ in your head. And there is neurophysiology and neurochemistry that affects our experience emotionally. That's important to pay attention to. That's one element of depression. The other element is a mind element. And that's the one that I really focus more on because that's my area of specialty and expertise. And that has to do with how we are thinking. What are the processes going on in our mind? Now, I'll refer back to another video that we've done here on this chapter. You can link to it right up there. This other video goes over a model. This will be familiar to some of you, but if this is the first time you visited Live On Purpose TV, this is going to be new. In that other video is an explanation of this model. These are two processes that are constantly going on in our mind, evaluation, and creation. Depression, as I pointed out in that other video, tends to originate down here in evaluation mode. Now what I mean by that, the short version, when we judge what is to be bad, it tends to fuel depression. Okay, think about what I'm saying. When we judge what is to be bad, it tends to fuel depression. Now you might look at your circumstances in life and say, well, this is bad. Okay, well, that's still a judgment, all right? <laughs> in fact, I had somebody sitting right here in my office recently, just going on and on and on about these problems that he's having in his job, right? And I wanted to call his attention to this concept. I kind of jumped in and I said, what? You have a job? And he kind of rolled his eyes, maybe like you are right now. Kind of like, well, Dr. Paul, ugh. But it helped him to realize in that moment, oh, hmm, yeah, this thing that I'm troubled over actually has some elements that are really awesome and cool. The fact that he has a job, right? So we start with our perception and our evaluation of what it is. There are some things from the research and from the psychological literature that you ought to know about depression. One of the things I learned this years ago, and it has been even more solidly verified since, is that there is a common belief that tends to be one of the most common depressionogenic beliefs. Now, I just threw in a $10 word because we do that as psychologists. It makes us feel smart. Depressionogenic just means it creates or causes or leads to depression. And here is the belief. It is the belief that my value, my worth can change. That might surprise you, okay? You'd think, oh no, it's the belief that my value is bad or that it's, I'm, I don't have value. Yeah, that can happen, but it's tied to a root belief that my value can change. Now, you might consider what you just think about this now, or what, what you t have traditionally believed about this. Can my value change? Can it go up? Can it go down? Because if I believe that it can change, then my every effort 
is geared toward managing it, either toward preventing it from going lower or trying to force it to go higher. And how's that going for you? This is a depressionogenic belief and it causes us to feel depression. That's something that we have known for years now through research and clinical experience. So what are we gonna do with our beliefs that are causing depression? This is the most powerful part of what we can do to deal with depression, to get clear about our own thinking. And really, I'm not asking anybody to change this. In fact, one of my clients recently said to me, okay, I get it, doc, I just, I guess I just really need to change how I think. And my response to him was, or not. That puzzled him. He's like, what do you mean? I want to change how I think. Oh, well, that's different. Okay, we can go there. I want to take the pressure off. You don't have to change how you think. I want you to see that how you think matters. And you know you're right. Have you connected with that yet? We know, it's not that we think we're right. Oh, we know we're right. Yeah. This gets in our way more than anything because we know we're right. We just get kind of trapped in that destructive pride and our, our story, our position about our life, whether it sucks or whether it rocks, we know that we're right. So an openness to a different interpretation is going to help and it's not going to seem natural at first. Think about it. If you're used to saying, oh, my life is so hard. And if I come to you and say, you know what? Actually, your life kind of rocks. I mean, you're richly blessed and you've got all this abundance and things to be grateful for. And you're like, okay, whatever. And you'll blow that off because you know that you're right. So being open to another interpretation is key. And then going back to the model that we talked about in that other video will help you to have the tools that you need to, to actually start changing the way that you think about certain things. Now, I said up earlier that there are two parts to this. There's a brain component, there's a mind component. So let's take both of those on as we deal with depression. There's lots of other videos and resources that we've put out here on Live On Purpose TV and other resources that you have on the thinking part. Now let's go to the brain part for just a minute. The physiological chemical aspect that we cannot ignore. And sometimes medication can be a very helpful adjunct to the other things that you're doing. I would caution you against using that as the only thing that you're doing about your depression, but be open to the possibility that that could help. And there are trained doctors and professionals who can assist you with that, who are licensed to take that on. There's a lot of, of natural or um, alternative kinds of remedies. You get to explore that and see what's going to help you the most. Here's something that I have found to have some traction, some bite to it. This came from some research done at Harvard University. Dr. Ed Hallowell is the first one who uh, presented this to me in a seminar that I attended years ago. And he called it brain maintenance. Brain maintenance. Do you like that idea? When you do maintenance on your car, you do the minor little things that are going to prevent the major breakdowns. So you don't have to get into major repairs later on. That's the idea of maintenance. What if we were to maintain the physiological equipment up here that is driving the depression? What would it take? There's four steps. The first step is to get enough sleep. Okay, to get enough sleep. That is really key to managing our mental health. Get enough sleep. Step number two, eat a balanced diet that is healthy and nutritious. Now, I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not going to tell you how to do that. But you already know that there are some improvements you could make, yeah? Take a look at what it is you're eating. What is the fuel that you're running through your system? And you think, well, okay, that's going to benefit my body but we're talking about my brain here. Yeah, your brain is part of your body. In fact, it's the most vital organ of your body. All of the nutrition and the nutrients and the oxygen and everything that you take into your body goes first to that most vital organ in your body. So it's important to pay attention to the fuel, okay? So far we've got get enough sleep, 
Eat a balanced diet, nutritious diet, watch the fuel. Number three, regular exercise. You knew I was gonna say that, didn't you? Yeah, this is huge. Exercise beats antidepressant medication in the clinical trials. It's a big deal and it has a huge impact. If you're having a little problem motivating yourself to do that, there's other resources to address that. But just understand that exercise is an important part of taking care of this. Your brain, the most vital organ in your body. And it's going to have other benefits for other aspects, you know, your nice shapely figure or other things that you're working on for the exercise, weight loss, whatever it is. I'm talking about taking care of your brain. Step four. Meditation, mindfulness, prayer, solitude. I'm throwing a bunch of words at you. Pick the one that fits you best. You've got to have some time in your life where you quiet the noise and you get connected with your core and with your values. So whatever practices serve you best to get there, solitude, mindfulness, meditation, prayer. We have seen through research and clinical experience that these things improve brain health, not to mention how it might benefit you spiritually or otherwise in your relationships. Brain maintenance. Okay, so we've talked about just in summary a, a couple of things we can do to handle the depression. First of all, realize it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. You're probably human having some human experiences and depression is a manifestation that some adjustments might be appropriate. Some of those have to do with your brain. Some of those have to do with your mind and your thinking. Positivity, paying attention to evaluation and creation processes that we've talked about here at Live On Purpose TV and practicing new ways of thinking, new perceptions, huge, huge, powerful impact. And then on the brain side, doing some brain maintenance. Consider the possibility of medication or other remedies that might help you, but then basically taking care of your brain through sleep, diet, exercise, and prayer and meditation. That's the brain maintenance piece. If we attack it from both sides, we're gonna have a whole lot better experience in managing and taking care of our own depression. Depression, it's something that we can deal with, that we can handle. There's more great content coming. Make sure you get tomorrow's episode of Live On Purpose TV.